another class on uh, performance. We have seen a series of four lessons in performance, aircraft multi engine performance. This is another lesson which is a uh, very important lesson. In the last lesson, we had seen takeoff and uh, we terminated at a point where aircraft just took off and reached a height of 35 feet with V2 by the end of the clearway, which we termed it as reference zero. Now, this class is all about what happens after the aircraft reaches 35 feet. That's this lesson. That point from here onwards, we will call it as segment run. There are several performance requirements as required by the airworthiness authorities, which we shall see in this lesson. Let's go to the lesson. Some time back, I had flown in a private jet in my previous company to a place called Antalya. Antalya is in southern Turkey. It's a tourist destination and it's on the coast of the Mediterranean uh, Sea. And uh, the place is surrounded by hill and uh, very high hills. The highest obstruction being 14,000 feet. You can see the picture of it, the uh, airport uh, picture. When we were to depart a day before, I was going through the performance requirement and I was astonished to find that there are some departures which uh, require very high climb gradients. I will show them to you now. Firstly, I like to draw your attention to the sector safety altitudes. I want you to notice that the uh, highest sector safety altitude uh, is uh, 12,000 feet in the southwest uh, sector. And in the area where we were departing, it does 10,000 feet. And uh, we were to uh, go to the north and the departure we expected was this Kuguru 1 mic departure and as you can see it requires 5.8 degrees of climb gradient and 3, 10 DME from a Alpha Yankee Tango which is the VOR of Italia and thereafter 4% until 20 DM. At 352 feet per nautical mile and 243 uh, feet per nautical mile there afterwards. I thought it was a fairly steep climb which was required, particularly to meet it in a single end. Luckily, the jet which I flew was powerful enough and it was just about meeting the requirements. Especially so, we had to fly almost 8 hours after takeoff from Antalya and the aircraft number of passengers were also full load. As we had adequate load, the aircraft was up to its maximum all of it. So the point is there are some airports which need very high climb gradients and therefore the segment climb derives its significance for calculating the Climb gradient. Okay, let's move on. Uh, this lesson is on segment climb, and uh, you have seen how important it is for some of the critical departure areas. Before we get up to the subject, we have to understand some terminologies associated with these performances. We will be seeing uh, several terms now. I will explain to you what is gross performance and the net performance. The gross performance is the measured performance of a type or fleet of aircraft. 
adjusted in a manner that every aircraft will at least meet the measured limit. That means when the aircraft is undergoing certification procedures, there is a demonstrated performance. Of course, that is flown by a test pilot and its performance would have been at its best. So that is adjusted down, downwards so that every aircraft manufactured will meet at least that performance. So that is called the gross performance. Now comes the net performance. Now this fleet of aircraft is going to be flown by several pilots who have who possess different skill levels and at times may not follow the uh, accurate procedure thereby there could be some deterioration in the performance. So we need to cater for such variations as well. So this cross performance itself is diminished in a manner as prescribed by the authorities to allow for variations due to existing circumstances such as pilot technique or taking the incorrect temperature, incorrect winds, which means you catered for 20 knot winds but it turned out to be 10 knots, etc. etc. So this is the net performance. So the regulatory authority specifies a percentage by which the gross performance would be deteriorated to give the net performance. If I were to summarize, this would be the minimum guaranteed performance at any circumstance and this is what we are going to use it for our day-to-day -day departure calculation. The next two definitions are very simple straightforward derived from gross performance and net performance. The gross height. The gross height is the true height at any point on the gross stage of flight path. It is converted to pressure altitude to determine the height of the flap retraction. We may be seeing all this as the lesson progresses. It is also used to denote the height to make speed power changes. Net height is the true height on the net takeoff flight path. It is used to plot the takeoff flight path and determine if a legal obstructed clearance limits are being met. So that's the difference. Uh, the cross performance is used to uh, determine the flap retraction and the speed changes, power changes, those heights. Whereas the net height, uh, that is the bare minimum, has to be calculated to see if you are meeting the obstacle clearance limit. Uh, we are going to be talking about uh, gradients uh, here on it's very often. So I just want to clarify the concept of uh, gradient and the rate of climb. What is the gradient? In any triangle, the height upon the distance would be the gradient. In our case, the aircraft forward travel with distance and aircraft uh, height gain on a particular time period would be the climb gradient. Let's see that. Gradient would be equal to height by distance. Now, if you di divide both the sides by time, it will work out to feet per minute on the numerator and the knots in denominator where distance is in nautical miles and time is in hours. Of course, for the numerator, height is in feet and time is in minutes. Therefore, we get rate of climb in feet per minute and speed in knots. Rate of climb would be equal, therefore, to gradient into ground speed. Now, let's understand it with the example. In the departure of Antalya, we saw that the climb gradient required was 5.4. Let's say the ground speed works out to 240 knots. What would be the rate of climb required? 
So, 5 decimal form into 240, that is 1296, almost about 1300 feet per minute rate of climb. Of course, it is easy for business jets and commercial jets to meet this requirement, but you must understand there are several twin engine turbo props may not be able to meet this requirement and they may have to offload some of the payload or alter their departure. Here I have tried to construct a airport and a departure and some high obstructions in and around on the takeoff path and I have tried to show you uh, as to what would be the takeoff path of, a, of an aircraft with normal two engine departure without suffering any engine failure. Please be aware this lesson is all about climb after takeoff on a single engine. However, I want you to understand the approximate flight path on a twin engine takeoff. Here it is. Okay, on a single engine climb, the regulations prescribed for all pin engine aircraft, be it jet or a turboprop, it should clear all the obstructions within till the time the aircraft reaches 1500 feet above the ground level. It should reach, uh, it should clear all the obstructions by minimum of 35 feet. So that is what has been shown in this pink line and uh, we will have to see as to how, what are the stages, what are the different segments in this, uh, in this path, net takeoff flight path which the aircraft with an engine failure is going to climb through. The very first uh, segment, the very first segment is the Gear retraction segment. I may as well warn you, it is it's fairly demanding on the power plant to fly with the gear down. So the first ever action is to see that the gear is retracted because with the gear down, there is a hell of a lot of drag which has been created uh, for the aircraft. And it's almost impossible uh, in higher all of weights to maintain height with on a single engine. I just want to recall an incident which happened a long time back. An ATR aircraft in an airline in Africa. Immediately after takeoff, they had had an engine failure, and uh, in an apprehension, they for, forgot to retract the gear. So they continued with the takeoff. And they were wondering. The performance is very, very poor as against the expected performance. However, uh, they had the presence of mind to quickly cut short and uh, return back and execute a safe landing. And then they realized the gear had been left down on a single engine. Luckily, they were able to make it. Of course, the live engine was written off after the uh, safe landing which they had executed because on a single engine with aircraft at maximum power it is sustained in very high turbine temperatures. Therefore, the immediate action after takeoff is the gear up. It takes some time for the undercarriage to go up. So, by then the aircraft is traveling forward. So this segment is called the gear up segment or the level segment. Now the regulations prescribe that there should not be any descent at all. That means the climb gradient has to be either zero or maybe marginally positive. So it cannot be descending. If conditions so happen, then we have to alter the 
departure. Here we come to the most interesting part, the second segment. Here onwards throughout your career, you here we come to the most interesting part, the second segment. Here onwards throughout your career, you will keep coming across the second segment rate of time. Uh, all the while, whenever you calculate your take off performance. Therefore, it is important. The second segment starts from the point where the gear has been retracted and aircraft commences its climb, maintaining V2. Mind you, the aircraft reaches V2 when it reaches 35 feet at reference zero and it level out or it had a level segment while retracting the gear maintaining V2 and now again it is maintaining V2 and climbing to a height of 400 feet which is called the acceleration altitude. That is the minimum prescribed with acceleration altitude. What is acceleration altitude will cost you the next segment we will see later. But in this segment, the second segment climb gradient minimum prescribed is 2 decimal 4 percent. And of course the other uh, parameters are the undercarriage had to be up, speed is either V2 or V2 plus 10. Why I put it's not necessary always that the engine will fail exactly at uh, takeoff point. If we have to have an engine failure in between, and if you have had a speed which is higher, we will gradually reduce it to V2 plus 10. And if you are not able to meet the 10 gradients, then then we will further reduce it to V2. But as a standard practice, we reduce it to V2 plus 10 if the speeds were higher. Assuming that aircraft will already be much above the net takeoff limit. Anyway, let us continue. With the gear up, the aircraft is climbing at V2 and it has to reach the minimum acceleration altitude of 400 feet at the second segment. This is very important. Uh, several places we would come across that aircraft is many times limited by second segment time. Now the third segment is again almost a level segment. Even though authorities, uh, airworthiness authority do not prescribe that it is a level segment, it is expected to be a level segment, which only means a uh, uh, little bit of descent is acceptable. But of course, it should meet, it should not deviate from the net takeoff flight path. This is a segment which the aircraft accelerates from P2 to the best climb, uh, climbing speed. In many aircraft, this best climbing speed would be the uh, best L by D, that is for the jets, which we have already learned. And uh, there would be a, it would be marked on your primary flight display by way of green circle or a green dot. So we call it green dot speed. And through the acceleration, the aircraft flaps or we call high lift devices had to be retracted in stages. Of course, there is a minimum prescribed speed below which you can't operate the speed, uh, operate the flaps, and you will have to accelerate in stages to the next higher speed, retract the flaps, next higher speed, retract the flaps, accelerate all the way up to the green dot speed, which is the best L by D speed, and then continue with your climb. This is the third segment. This is also equally important, especially from pilot's flying skill point of view.
Now we come to the uh, fourth and so called the last segment. By now, the aircraft has been cleaned up, that means the carriage has been put up, the flaps have been retracted, so there is no more extra drag, and the aircraft has already achieved the best air by D, which gives you the best angle of climb. And uh, most important, we would have opened the, the live engine thrust to full power when we had the engine failure. So all the while through the climb, through the first segment, second segment and third segment, the aircraft is maintaining thrust levers at maximum which is called the takeoff setting. Can we continue with this? Of course, no. The flight manuals prescribe the time with which, uh, up to which this light engine thrust can be maintained. 99% of the planes have it at 10 minutes if you are on a single engine or 5 minutes if both engines were to operate. This is just to conserve the engine life. Well, it is capable of flying up to 10 minutes at, uh, with the uh, thrust at uh, takeoff. After that, not that it will not fly, but could be. We can expect the In any case, it's not good for the turbines because we are sustaining very, very high uh, temperatures at take of thrust settings. Therefore, the flaps are up, the gear is up, the aircraft is maintaining best climbing speed and continuing to climb up to 1500 feet, which we had kept end of this segment climb. Thrust lever at take off position. The most important, the climb gradient minimum which has to be met is 1 decimal 2 percentage for this uh, segment. There are some airports which are surrounded by hills uh, which could be uh, critical and uh, may not, some aircraft performance may not be able to meet this. Uh, the last segment uh, climb of uh, radiant requirement of 1 decimal 2 uh, percent. Nevertheless, uh, most of the commercial planes are able to meet the requirement, so flight operations carry on. So, as I told you, with the line engine thrust, there is a limitation uh, for 10 minutes. Therefore, during this climb, if this 10 minutes is being crossed, then the pilot must reduce the thrust. So, which we call the thrust reduction point or 10 minutes, whichever is earlier. The thrust reduction point would be exactly at 10 minutes if we have not reached 1500 feet. Alternately, at 1500 feet, the, the pilot would change the thrust rating to uh, maximum continuous climb, MCT. Now, the aircraft reaches 1500 feet and that brings us to the end of the segment climb uh, part of this departure procedure. So, we have seen the takeoff phase and the segment climb phase. Now, here onwards, 1500 feet onwards will constitute in the en route phase, which we will see in the next lesson. Now, the gross takeoff flight, flight path 
would obviously be much higher and therefore uh, the heights that are reached on the gross take of flight path are much more comfortable which is what I have shown in the uh, green color that is the upper line. I want to uh, bring to your notice this gross climb gradient is if it is reduced by 0.8% throughout it works out to the net climb gradient. Now, uh, what happens if there are some obstructions on the take-up path and the aircraft has to deviate a wee bit uh, here and there, then it will meet the climb uh, requirement. So in such a case, if you are not able to meet the straight take-up path climb gradients, then they construct specific standard instrument departures for that particular airport for that particular uh, profile or profile of obstructions. So, this is constructed by the computers and supplied by the manufacturer to the operators and therefore they are able to operate optimally. Therefore, if there is a term involved after takeoff, what should be the penalty? If the bank angle exceeds 15 degrees for the turn, then the clearance for the entire take of flight path that would be required as 50 feet. This is another very interesting uh, departure which I came across for my career. And we would often practice this departure when, whenever we went. Uh, the departure is from a place called Aspen in Colorado, US. Again, surrounded by hills, and the airport elevation itself is 7,837 feet, and the sector safety altitude is all around the hills is 15,700 feet. And we understand that, especially in summers, it becomes favorite destination amongst the super rich there but operations become very critical since uh, the temperatures are fairly high please understand 7800 feet the ISA itself is almost close to zero degrees and the existing temperatures are 15 20 and that works out to ISA plus 20 therefore departures from Aspen airport is critical. So this is a very interesting thing. So I thought I'll share it with you. It is interesting. So I thought I will, uh, now we are at the subject. I just want you to bring to your notice the departure from Aspen. For, there is a runway, uh, take, uh, runway 3-3. Take off from runway 33, I want you to notice how interesting is the departure. Climb on heading to 343 to 9100 feet, then climbing turn left on to 16000 feet, on heading 273 to intercept outbound course from back course localizer and to 13 dm. The same pictorially. Uh, it has been shown, I have tried to show it clearly. So notice that the aircraft is departing, 9100 feet, turning left and then uh, it is to cross that lens at 16000 feet. If it doesn't, then it has to continue climbing in the holding pattern. And uh, of course, the climb gradients that are required uh, or minimum of 460 feet per nautical mile. You may work out the max of the climb gradient. It's a very interesting uh, departure, so I thought I, I will uh, 
discuss it with you. There are many other airports uh, in the world located in hilly terrain and requiring very tricky departure and high departure uh, climb gradients. Kathmandu is one and uh, uh, which I tried to show. So this departure involves a right turn and crossing a particular point and if we couldn't cross the uh, height prescribed then we had to continue climbing orbit over the airport and then proceed on the departure. So such are the climb requirements for safe operations and uh, I am sure you all could have realized by now that how important is the segment climb. The more you understand, the better it is, especially when you are going through the performance charts. This will keep coming back to you, the second segment climb, and the fourth segment climb, and all those parameters. I wish you all the best. Okay, I thank you all for having gone through this lesson and I hope you found it very interesting. Uh, even though it's a dull topic, I try to make it interesting. Uh, but it is very important and you will realize that when you come across tricky situations, that's the time you will find uh, uh, such calculations become more interesting for you. I thank you all once again and Please feel free to write on the mail shown here about your opinion about the lesson and feel free to comment, pass any comments, critical comments particularly. Thank you once again.